Well, 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 this is your boy, Apostle and Prophet and Success Coach Eddie Tate, coming back to you again uh, with a very, another ex very exhilarating and exciting message today and uh, tonight. And what we're going to do is uh, I'm picking up from today from part two. We're talking about seasonal change too. Yes, it's very interesting. So tell somebody that we're on the line. We're here, we're on the line. Yes, yes, yes. I tell y'all, I feel such change in the air. I feel such things happening. This is my. I feel things happening. I'm, I am excited about the season that we're in. Not that we're coming in, but the season that we're in already. The season has shifted. The things have changed. And I want each one of y'all to know that. So, we, we talked about uh, preparing uh, for the oncoming season. We did two messages on that, I believe. And now we're talking, we're talking about actually being in the season. Sad, I was telling you, what's holding you back? In this season, you don't need nothing holding you back. I mean, you don't need nothing holding you back. You don't need your own mind. You don't need the opinions of people. You don't need um, your own bad habits. You need nothing holding you back. This is an exciting time, and it is time now to launch forth and go forth in the things of God. Amen. Oh, I don't know about you. I refuse to be held back. I refuse to be held back. And there's some of you right now, you better carry that same attitude. You know, ain't no sense of blaming no devil, blaming no demons, blaming folks. You got to look into your own self. Yeah, I know, the, I know the devil's a culprit, and I know he can bring hindrances. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, uh, we talked about exposing demonic uh, spirits and stuff like that, you know. But what I want to do today, I'm um, coming from a very practical point of view. Because when your seasons change, you got to recognize when change has taken place. And today, we talked about that today. We talked about things changing. And we, we, we talked about when, when your season changes and all the things that you have to do. Now, for the sake of some of y'all tonight that might be coming on here, I might do just a little bit review here. Just a little bit review. I'm going to review, review just a little bit. So, we, um, we understand today we talked about the blessed man. The blessed man, he's the... One that's been empowered to prosper, a blessed man, blessed woman. And uh, God means something. God just spoke something over him or her. It means to you rock where we get eulogy from. God has spoken some great things over us. All right? And then we talked about the environment that the that, that blessed man or woman don't walk in. We talked about the counsel of the wicked. The counsel of the wicked is the advice of those that are still sitting in church, but they're ungodly now. They once was godly. Now they're, now they're giving you bad advice. They don't want to tithe. They don't want to sow seed. They don't want to do nothing the pastor tell them to do. But they want to sit there and give advice. Okay, that's ungodly. That's wickedness. All right. And we see, and we call to <coughs> the fact that sinners are wicked. Are not wicked. Because it talks about standing. Standing in the way of of sinners. Now, what that means, we talking about logic. Sinners are logical. They're not saved. They're not spiritually discerned. They can't discern the things of God. So, guess what? They are logical. Yes, they're logical. And I want to I want to cover something with you here today. Sinners are logical. That's why your your, your family and your friends that are sinners They'll give you logical information, not based on faith or believing God, because they don't know. They're not spiritually done. They can't see into the spirit realm. All right. So you can't blame them. They just love you. And they just appreciate. God wouldn't do that if I were you. But see, you don't know God telling you to do it because you're walking by faith, not by sight. Then we talk about the scornful. The scornful are those who are mockers, those who are mockers, those who mock you, those who mock your God. See what I'm saying? Th th those that make fun of you and and just persecute you and, and, and just, you know. Then we talked about where his delight is in the law of the Lord. And we talked about in the, about the law of meditation. The law of meditation means to imagine or to think upon, to chew the cud, to mutter. Like a cow chew the cud, spit the grass up, and then they get hungry again. He chews, not, not like the dog with tongue to vomit, but the cow has four stomachs. 
So he regurgitates the grass and out of the one storage stomach. And then he eats it in the digestive tract. And then he said he meditates day and night. Meditate, mutter, think upon, constantly think upon, you know. So, and then he says here, he should be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. We talked about being planted in the presence of God. We talked about, uh, we're just reviewing here a little bit. We talked about <coughs> planted by the rivers of water. Trees that plant by rivers are, are very nourishing. They're nourishing. They're, they're, they're green. And, and no place better place to be planted but is in God's presence. Amen. Yes, Lord God. And so now, and then we then we talked about um uh here we talked about he brings forth his fruit or her fruit in their season. You know, it, the fruit fruit has to be right to eat or it messes your stomach up. So we understand the time and season, we understand when things are ripen enough that we can have. Because there were some things ain't ripe enough for you, or you ain't ripe enough for it. It'll mess you up if you get it right now. Call house, husband, wife, you name it, whatever. Even a greater ministry. Some people want a greater ministry and uh, they ain't ready for it. They can't even uh, pastor 10 people. Y'all see that? They're, 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 but yet they want a thousand. They ain't going to do them, we just run them off. That's all they're going to do. Okay. And then, and then he says, at least, and whatsoever, whatsoever he do it shall prosper. So in this season, everything you touch is going to turn to gold. Now, I'm not saying you ain't going to have trials. Okay. Now, tonight we're talking about uh, when a person missed their season. And it is very possible for people to miss their seasons. Yes, it is. Very possible for a person to miss their season. I want you to understand that. And I, and I know and I know that you, you, you might be thinking, no, well, it's the will of God. It'll happen. Can I share something with you? The will of God is not automatic. It doesn't automatically happen. Somebody said, well, Brother Tate, the Lord is sovereign. He do what he wants to do. Here is the problem with that. God has rules and he has uh, principle. He set his own self under. For example, a spirit can't operate in the earth without a body. That's why God, that's why God had to have a flesh and bone body to come down and do the works of redemption by, the, by, by Jesus. See that? So now, God has. He has principles, things he don't. So the will of God is not automatic. You know how I know that? He said, I would that all men be saved. But me and you know all people ain't going to be saved. You know why? Because they are not going to do what it takes for them to be saved. In the same aspect, in the same way. There's a whole lot of people that's not going to do what it takes to manifest certain things out the word of God, even though it's there for them, and it's, even though it's the will of God for them. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people will miss seasons. I missed a season before. Yes, I have. And the number one reason why you miss season is because you don't heed to the instructions that God give you in the new season. Now, this is what I'm telling you. This is why I told you last season, you, you should have been working on your mind. You should have been working on your mind because God wants you to enjoy this season. Enjoy this season. But unfortunately, you won't be able to enjoy this season if you ain't worked on your mind enough. Y'all see that? And if you haven't changed enough. Now, because it is very possible to still have a mindset of living in the same, in the last season. And you in a mindset to think that you're still in tribulation. Come on here. You, you let me share something with you here. One of the worst things in the world is have a mind from last season where you think you're still going through. When God has already relifted up the band, it's done, it's over. Stick a fork in it. It's over. Do y'all hear me right now? I said. Stick a fork in it. It's over. Y'all catch me on that. Some of you right now, you gotta get you 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 can't be caught up in the fact that that you that you talking about you still in that season. Come on, somebody. You you're gonna have to understand that it, it when 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 the shift has come, you're gonna have to keep your ears and your eyes open 
for whatever it is that God is doing this because you don't want to miss this. I missed it. I had a store one time. God kept telling me to change the product, but I wouldn't. I missed a, I missed a company that could have been all over the city where I was living. The stores should have, could have been everywhere. I missed something. Y'all hear me? Yeah, I missed it. And there's some of you right now. I missed different other seasons, but I learned something about this here. I learned that you miss a season. It's, not, it's possible it could come around, but it's going to take a while for it to come back around. You know why? Because God wants you to be able to seize the opportunity. Anybody hear me right now? Mm -hmm. So now, we begin to understand mm, that it is possible to miss the season. Now, the sons of Issachar, they had one good thing. They recognized any new times and seasons. A lot of people don't know times and seasons. A lot of people, that's why a lot of people that are religious, caught up in church, just, just keep running the church, doing the same old thing, hearing the A and B selection, the choir sing, and jump and shout a little bit, kick over some chairs, and go home and eat some collard greens and steak. Now, let me share something with you. Change is inevitable. Change is mandatory. Change is a part of what God does. Seasonal change. Seasons change. Let's look at nature. The winter don't stay the winter all year long. Now you live in Alaska, it might be in there, but I'm talking about in even up there, seasons change. The snow will melt. Y'all hear me? It will stop snowing sooner or later. Spring don't stay spring, always. The new growth comes, and then here comes summer. But summer don't stay summer. I know they say in Florida, it feel like summer all year round, but people who live there beg you to differ. Because people live in Florida actually gets cold in the winter. And they wear coats and stuff in the winter. Now, maybe you come from New York or Chicago, you might not be wearing there. Because you're used to a colder climate. But they basically, they, um, you know, they, they, it's not, it's not always summer to them. Fall is going to come and it's going to go. Harvest time. You can sit and let them crop sit out there if you want to until winter come. You let them crop sit out there, you're going to lose them crops. You know why? Because fall is the harvest time. It's time to gather the crops. What are you doing in your spiritual fall? Are you gathering? Are you going to let it sit out there and the winter mess it up? Uh-oh. Why? Because you're too lazy to gather it? Why are you too full of fear? The Bible said that the slugger said there's a lion in the street. That's why he's not going out there. Always making excuses. Laziness create and make excuses. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pastor, I just don't have enough time. Yeah. I think, you know, that you, you really have to understand. Everybody gets the same 24 hours. It's what you do with them 24 hours. Are y'all hearing me right now? Now, I want you to understand something, that we, we are in a great time now to where God is manifesting, and there is some birthing taking place. Some of you are in a spiritual harvest that is a gathering. A birthing is coming forth. The Bible says it's a time to plant. You know what I'm saying? And it's time to, to gather that which has been planted. You're going to have to figure out where you are in time. You know, you, you got to figure out where you are in time and what it is that you're supposed to be doing in time. Do y'all hear me right now? Mm -hmm. So now, you're going to have to understand tonight is that Spiritually and destinally, there's things that God is doing that you're going to have to understand. You know, there, there's things that you'll have to understand. Now, 
I want you to understand today that the devil is up to some very crafty things. And yes, he wants you to miss your season. Do y'all hear me right now? He wants you to miss your season. Amen. He wants you to miss your season. Now, I want you to understand. I want you to gather this here today. You're going to have to understand that in this time, the places where God is taking you to, you're going to have to know all the functionality of this season. Because if not, you're going to miss it. Number one, you got to know the purpose of it. And number two, you got to hear to the voice of God. The instructions of God. Number three, you're going to have enough wisdom to move out on the instructions. That's why you got to practice being a doer. Practice moving out. Because number four, in spite of you moving, you're going to have maybe some persecution. You're going to have some haters. You're going to have people coming against you. Because it is your time. And as you move, you're going to start manifesting things. Things are going to start birthing. Things are going to start coming forth. Do y'all see that? They're going to start coming forth. Now, I want you to understand something here tonight. That in spite of how much hell and chaos you've been through, you are coming into a place to where that you're coming into a land flowing. I told y'all this morning about the flow. That in them pumps, sometimes them pumps had to be primed. You had to put water in them old pumps. You had to put water in those pumps and you had to pump it until it primed, till you primed it. And with priming it meant that I'm pouring the water in there because I need the water to connect with the water in the ground. That was some of the best water you could taste. Came straight up out the ground. No chemicals, no nothing, no plants or nothing. Wasn't bottled water. It was just good old water that came out the ground. Now, what I want you to understand something here now, just like I had to pull that, that water in that pump, I've got to prime you. Yeah, i got to prime you up. got to prime you. And that's why I'm pouring this word down in you. Because I want this word to catch a hold to all the things that God has for you. And I want you to catch it. Uh-uh. I don't want to see you miss this season. No, I don't want to see you miss your season. And, I, and tragically, I've seen people miss it. I have missed the season. But I tell you one thing, I'm not missing no more. And let me say this here. And then there are certain people that you will have to keep your mouth close to. There are certain people that you cannot be running around talking about what God is doing or what God's going to do. Because, see, they are blessing blockers. They are haters. And what they will do, they will come, they will pray against you out of jealousy. Do y'all hear me right now? So therefore, you got to, you have to know who to talk to in this season, who not to talk to. You're going to have to have some hush mouth grace, shut mouth grace, because, you know, you're going to have to walk in silence. You're going to have to walk in silence. You're going to be like Nehemiah. Nehemiah went by night to see about building the wall. The Bible said, he said, no man went with me. He said, he said the men that was with me and the beast I rode upon. Because there were some things that you cannot share with people. You have to go on and just do it. Am I talking right? When you go on and just do it, and you got to take that ground away from them praying against you, working witchcraft. I'm not saying that the witchcraft going to stop you, but it just, it just creates unnecessary trials and stuff. If all you do is you just keep your mouth closed, move in silence, live in silence, move in silence. Are y'all listening to me right now? I said live and move in silence. Yes, sir. And because even when they got to building the walls, the Bible said that they received persecution and it began to say that, that in the midst of it, they sent false prophets. They sent letters. They sent all kind of plots. And what they were trying to do was they were trying to frustrate their purpose. Nehemiah said they tried to frustrate our purpose. And can I tell you something? That's what the devil wants to do in this season is to frustrate your purpose. If he frustrates your purpose, he can create a distraction. He can get your mind on the frustration, get your emotions all bogged down. Are y'all hearing me right now? You cannot let him, my God, you cannot allow him to frustrate your purpose. 
You have to get to a place to where Nehemiah said, we, we built with one hand and we fought with the other one. And I told the devil in this season, I got to build with one hand and fight with the other one. You will not frustrate my purpose, nor will you stop me. You got to get that mindset, people of God. I will not be stopped. I will stop. I will stay resilient because everything I do in this season is going to prosper. And I realized that. That's why whatever God tells me to put my hands on, I'm going to put my hand. I don't care if it's writing a book. I don't care if it's doing a crusade. I don't care if it's birthing a church. I don't care what it is. My God, The time is here now of a new birth. The time now. And I, and I, and I, and, and, and I come to let some of y'all know tonight is that in spite of how things have been, this is your season and your time to bring forth the new birth. Come on here, somebody. I said, bring forth the new birth. And I'm telling you, the anointing of God is going to help you birth everything. And I'm telling you something. You got the Holy Ghost, the midwife of the Holy Ghost. See, I was born down, down south in, in Arkansas. And I wasn't born in the hospital. I was born at home. And my auntie used to come by all the houses. And she would deliver all the babies. Well, they called her a midwife. And I, I come to let y'all know that God has sent you a midwife called the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to help you birth your business, going to help you birth your ministry, help you birth your marriage. It's going to help you birth your business, your career. Come on here, somebody. I'm telling you, I feel the midwife of the Holy Ghost right now. Glory to God. God said in this hour right here, he's saying that you are going to have to understand that everything that God is doing this hour, he's bringing it forth. And I'm telling you something, you will not be able to be stopped. Come on here, somebody. God is putting an unstoppable anointing on you. God is anointing you to rise as the cream of the crop. You will no longer be the tail, but you will be the head. You will no longer be the back of the line, but you will be in the front of the line. God is turning the front of the line just for you. Glory. Oh my God. I said he's turning the front of the line. Do you understand me right now? God is turning the front of the line. In other words, there's a favor that's coming upon you. And God is going to put you in a position of where that you wasn't in a place that you probably don't even qualify to be in. I feel immeasurable favor. I feel the spirit of the Lord right now. And God told me to tell some of y'all, get ready because you will not miss your season. You will not miss your season to birth your business. You will start doing, I told you, as you prepare in the off season, sometimes you got to start buying things for your business. Come on. Told you for every church that I predict that I've ever established, I always start buying equipment first, even though before I even get the building. Well, one building I got, I just went in and started preaching. But most time, I would go and start buying the sound system, buying the microphones. Come on here, start buying the equipment before I even get the building. Some of you all gonna have to move in faith. You gotta start buying your equipment, buying your supplies, buying stuff that's gonna take for your business. Get a well drawn up plan for it. Get a vision. Are y'all hear me? Purpose. You, you all going to have to understand that right now. You got to start moving right now. Quit where, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. No, you got, you got to, you got to keep moving. Get your business name. Get your business plan. Get your, your DBA. Come on here. Get, get your DBA. You can go downtown and get your DBA. Get your doing business ass. Come on here. Get your business life. Get, quit sitting around talking about, I'm waiting. If, if you want to do this, but if you don't, don't do it and don't keep talking about it. Come on, somebody. I don't care what it is. You want to go back to school, you start making preparation. First of all, you start praying about that. If you need to go back to school, you go back to school. But you might not even need to go back to school. God might have a plan to elevate you without the, the without going to school, a, a, a traditional classroom setting. He might just educate you over the computer on YouTube or wherever. Listen to seminars, listen to tapes. Come on, learning how to master finances and whatever it is that you're trying to do. All kind of businesses are on the internet right now. Every kind of business you want to do, they had it on there. Just get on there and start studying. Educate yourself. Commit yourself to lifelong learning. I wish I had somebody out there know what I'm talking about. Commit yourself to lifelong learning. Quit get that old religious spirit up off you. Come on, somebody. Get rid of that old religious spirit. Just want to go to church, have a good time. Start doing some research. Start studying. Start believing. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Now, you, you're going to have to understand this now. That it is important that you recognize that this season is up on you. I told you prepare an off season. I always say if the Beverly Hill Builders had prepared in the hills of Kentucky, got a rich mindset before they got the Beverly Hills, they could have enjoyed their wealth. Am I talking right? They could have enjoyed their wealth. There is some of you, you're going to have to get to a place to where you start enjoying your life right now. Oh, Pastor, say, when I get money, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there. Just take a trip to a hotel way on the other side of town or into another nearby city. And just stay in there for the weekend and take yourself out to eat. Look at the attractions of that place. Act like you're on vacation. It's called a staycation. Get your mind out of the stress of where you are. Come on. You sitting around in the same old familiar place. You, you won't go nowhere. You won't take yourself out to eat. You won't do anything. You won't go buy yourself a blouse or a shirt. Now, I ain't saying you got to be a spendthrift and all that, but I'm saying sometimes treat yourself. And once in a while, I treat myself to a pair of Jordans. You know, I don't buy one none every month. But once in a while, I buy me a Jordan outfit. You know, but I'm just saying, it whatever your fetish is, y'all see that? Whatever it is you like, glory. Now, understanding this, this here, this is very important that you do not miss this season. Now, we talked about how the blessed man operates, the environments, meditating in the word, understanding when it's his season. See, this is the thing, because in the season, that's when the last part of the scripture comes up. I said, what sort of he do it shall prosper. In the season, you're going to have to, there's things you're going to have to do. But to, let me say this. Do not expect the struggle to do that. Can I say it again? Do not expect to struggle to do that. It's going to come with ease. You know why? Because of all the hell you went through last season. It was preparing you. Come on. I said it was preparing you. So now, don't look to struggle. See, the problem is some of y'all, y'all looking to struggle. Oh, I'm going to get it. But I tell you, it's going to be a struggle. As long as you, you keep talking like that, the devil going to make sure he accommodates you. I said he's going to make sure that he accommodates you. As long as you talking like you keep talking like that. Oh, why so hard, apostle? What are you saying? You're opening the door for demons. You better be saying like, boy, the blessing Lord make it rich has made me rich and had no sorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move in this season with no struggle. See, the devil don't want you talking like that. See that? See, then he don't want you talking like that. See, but you got to understand where you are in time. There are some people are in seasons where, you know, uh, they they are waiting for certain things to manifest. But while they're waiting, they are not silent and they are not. They are serving. They are doing things for God. They are helping other people. Y'all see that? Here's a quick principle. In the season for this, whatever you make happen for other people, God will make happen for you. Hmm. Yeah, I said it. Whatever you make happen for other people, God will make happen for you because of the law of sowing and reaping. I said the law of sowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. The law of sowing and reaping. So what you make happen to other people, you make somebody make something happen for somebody. Somebody was struggling to do something. You got the resource to help them. You help them. Well, when it's your time, you already got that set in place. You got the, you got the, uh, you, you can look to look for reciprocation. See, you can look for reciprocation. You can look to receive. It's your season now to receive. You was in a season of sowing, but then it comes down time. You got to recognize, you know, it's my time to receive now. And nothing is going to be impossible. It's my time. It's my time now. Come on here, somebody. Oh, glory. I'm telling y'all, it doesn't matter 
anything what the enemy says or do in this season right here, don't let yourself be distracted. As the great, late great Miles Monroe said, the best way to stop a man is to distract him. Hmm. Some of you all got to understand. You got to get past distractions. Got you crying. Oh, God. Come on here. It's nothing but a distraction, a diversion. It's trying to divert you away from the destiny and place where you're supposed to be going to. It's a diversion. Hallelujah. You're going to have to pick yourself up. Shake yourself off. Shake the dust off. Get up. Get up and declare, this is, this is my day. This is my time. Do y'all hear me right now? I'm telling y'all right now, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you. I'm shooting straight from the hip. You got to recognize that if it's your time to start a business, you, 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 you should have done all the preparatory things to do. That's what I was telling you about preparing in the off season. If you're still in the off season and you know the season ain't here yet, you better start preparing. Am I talking right? Find out how much money you need. You got to do things that don't cost you nothing. Hmm. See, I know you think everything costs money. Some things don't cost, don't cost you nothing. It might cost you a few pennies to go get a DBA. Doing business as. You might have to incorporate your business. LLC or whatever. See what I'm saying? Non-profit status. Non-profit organization. See, so 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 you, you might have to do this here. It might cost you a little money. But you have to get yourself, I want to use a word, in line. You got to get the proper alignment. The proper alignment. Are y'all hearing me? You talking about you're going to sell music and you don't have a publishing company? That it, so so if, if you let somebody use your music, they can just take it. You have no copyright. You have no publishing company that you're running your music through. Because then when you got a publishing company, what happens is when they do Record, they play how many units sell. You get royalties back into your publishing. Y'all see that? And some of y'all better quit discussing ideas with people that you got. Because there are some people, they will listen and they'll move out on your idea while you sitting there talking about what you want to do. Do you see that right now? They, 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 will, they will move out on what you talking about. They'll be about it. Next thing you know, oh, wait a minute, that was my idea for that business. You didn't have it on paper. You ain't have it documented. You ain't had it uh, 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 copywritten. You ain't done nothing but just talk about it. And I tell y'all in the on karma season, that's pre preparatorial things you have to do. Come on here, somebody. You got to learn how to protect yourself legally. I tell my kids with music, you got to learn how to protect yourself legally. I don't care if you're doing business with me. You put some paper on me. You put a contract on me. It, it, you know, if it's some kind of music deal and, and we need paperwork, you sign. Get used to paper. Skip all these handshakes and verbal agreements. Get used to legal paper. That's the only thing that stands up in court. And you need to practice that. Are y'all hearing me right now? Some of you in business even right now. You got to learn all the legal channels. You need to learn the lingo. See that? It's more than just operating business. You need to learn how to keep your money up. You need to learn how to, to see how much money you're making. Don't ever put all your business in the hands of somebody. Learn how to count your own money. Nothing wrong with having a CPA. But at the end of the day, you need to learn and keep up with your own money. Come on here, somebody. Whoo, glory. Now, I want you to get it and I want you to really understand that you you are in a place now. You're in a place to where <clears throat> you have to know the season. Y'all hear me? You have to know. Now, I got to know where I'm at. Now, and I got to know what environment and what company I need to keep. I cannot be around mediocre, slotful people. Are y'all hearing me? I got to get around some go-getters like me. If I'm going to be a go-getter, I need to be around other go-getters. 
Go-getters are not those that talk about it, but they be about it. They hustle. They go out and get it. Are y'all hearing me right now? I said they go out and get it. I wish I had somebody right now. I said they go out and they get it. Come on here, somebody. Now, I want you to understand that there are several things that God wants you to understand in this season. That he clearly wants you to understand. That that you got to be able to sense the season. You Now, the only thing that you got to spend a lot of time in God's presence. Mm -hmm. Not in the presence of busyness. Not in the presence of people. I'm talking in God's presence. When you spend the time in God's presence, you'll be able to. Now, this is the principle of the still small voice. A lot of times, God not going to speak for no thundering voice coming from heaven. But sometimes he's just going to speak to you in a still small voice. He might speak to you in a dream. And let me say this here. I don't care how much adversity is coming against you. I don't care what is. If God tells you something. You could take it to the bank. I don't care. Because when God tells you something, the enemy's going to kick up. Because what the devil wants you to do, he wants you to doubt what God says. He wants you to get your mind. He wants you to give up. He will frustrate you so much. Come on here. Until you're at the, be at a point of giving up on them. Both hands saying, forget it. Mm, Y'all see that? So, you got to know that God spoke. And you got to stick with it. Oh, your emotions are going to be coming against you. Your emotions are going to say, man, you better just get this mess up. This thing can't be like what God said. This thing can't be working. The devil going to put his two cents in. You see, you're right. You, 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 it, it couldn't be God. It wouldn't be this hard if it was God. Not necessarily hard. What makes it hard is when a person allows themselves to get their mind stuck on the negative part of what the devil is doing. Then it starts getting hard. But long as you keep your mind on the things of God, you said, I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind what? Stayed on thee. So long as your mind is stayed on God, worshiping, praising the word and just imagining yourself with that thing. Imagine yourself in that house. Imagine yourself making plenty of money. Imagining your business being structured and built. Just keep imagining. Keep focused. See, the enemy wants you to put focus on what he's doing. And then he wanted you to focus on what people are doing against you. The lies they're telling on you. Are y'all hearing me? I said in the lies that they're telling on you. The things that they're doing to you. He wants you to focus in on that. But friends, if I were you, I would not focus on that. The Bible said we look not at the things which are seen. The things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Come on, somebody. I want you to understand that. Oh, my God. Hmm. I said, I want you to understand that today. That everything that you're going through, a lot of it is purpose and it is helping to push forth your birth. It is birthing the thing. And it is the season now for things to come forth. Oh, I, I tell y'all, in the name of Jesus, it's the season for your, your businesses to come forth. It's the season for your ministries to come forth. It's the season for your anointing to come forth greater than it's ever been. The season of blue fire is up on you. Highest level of the fire and the anointing. The might of God's spirit. The ability to do anything. Come on here, somebody. Oh, I, I speak to you today and I prophesy to you that this is the season of fire. The blue fire. It's come la bow shot. Mm. You, you, you're going to have to understand that, that all this trouble is pushing. It said we look not at things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are seen are not. Saying they are eternal. Paul described a whole lot of stuff they went through. Are y'all hearing me? Being cast down but not forsaken. Paul went through a lot. He said, we always bearing about in the body. Many of you are bearing these trials for a greater anointing, a greater ministry, a greater prophetic, a greater purpose. Come on here. A greater anointing for business. See, I don't want people to think that when I say anointing, I'm only talking about apostles, prophets, and preaching, and teaching, and prophesying. No, I'm talking about anointings for everyday life God gives you. God anoints you for business. 
He anoints you for that career. They'll wonder why you can carry that company and nobody else can do it. Because God puts an anointing on you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. You have to understand that the spirit of the Lord mm, is moving. And let me share something with you here. See, when, 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 when God anoints you, he'll anoint you to do things. There's some people that can do music and they have never took a, a, a lesson in life. Me, for one, that can write. I can write you a song in about five minutes. As long as the track is, however long the track is, if it's four or five, I can write you a song without pencil or paper. I can, I know how to get the track and start singing. And God is gifting me where the lyrics just come as I sing. Now I'm trying to show people are gifted to certain capacities. They are gifted. Are y'all hearing me right now? So now you got to understand some of you that can draw folks business plans so quick and make him make it make their head swim. You, you did that that quick. It's a gift. It's get you're gifted. It's a capacity where you're gifted. That's one of the facets of your life. And in these seasons, God is going to sharpen your gifts, your anointings even greater. God is going to sharpen you because you're going to get a habit of hanging around sharp people. Iron sharpening iron. You're getting away from all the wood and hay and, and stubble folk, all that stuff. You need somebody that can sharpen you. Oh my God. Make you better. I want People around me that's going to make me better. People that's going to put a demand on me to change. People that I want to be accountable to to change. Y'all don't hear me right now. I don't want to stay in the same place and miss my season. I need my habits to change. I need things to change. I don't want to stay in the same place and miss my season. Are y'all hearing me right now? I want to rebirth some of y'all churches. Some of your pastors are scared to go in buildings, still scared to go in buildings. Talking about Corona. But you ain't scared to go to a baseball game or a basketball game or a Walmart. But you're scared to go in church. Talking about, that's the trick of the devil. Oh, come on here, somebody. See? Oh, I want y'all to catch me on this here note here. God is interested in bringing you to a place where you've never been before. But you got to become somebody you've never been. And you do that, you got to do some things you've never done. In this season, the Lord's going to be putting demands on your gifts. Yes. See, don't be surprised if people lose their job and all that. And the only thing they got is they cooking, they're cleaning, uh, they're typing, whatever they could do. Their computer skills to depend on. That's sometimes God thrusting people into entrepreneurship. Because sometimes people will not venture into entrepreneurship as long as they got that job, got that secure check. And sometimes that check can be a curse. But that check can keep you in the safe zone. And being in the safe zone, you're not going to experience that blessing. That, that You're not going to experience that, that supernatural prosperity. You want to play it safe. You want to go to work and trade time for money. Keep trading time for money. That's not a good trade. I don't care what you say. Yeah, I know you got to work sometimes. You got to work. Do what you do. Have a survival job, as they called it. But job, I told you this morning, said it means just above broke. Mm. Just above broke. Come on. Just above broke. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that. But you know why? Because people live from paycheck to paycheck. Now. Nothing wrong if you do have to work, but you got to graduate from trading time for money. You're going to have to get a plan. You got to start saving some capital. Even if you got to start your business from the sideline while you're yet working your day job, but be working on your on your evening job, create your job. My father once told me, he said, if you, you can't find a job, son, create a job, create one. I used to go out and clean people's yards and cut people grass. And, uh, I, I, you know, when times I wasn't working on the truck hauling stuff with him, I'd be out there 
working in lumber yards, working in places, you know, cleaning lumber, taking nails out of lumber, anything that I could do to create a job. I had my own little cleaning, uh, lawn cleaning, cutting grass and cleaning grass, cleaning people. I clean up stuff for folks. And I was about in the uh, fifth or sixth grade doing this here. Come on. So I'm, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to show you something here. You, you're going to have to understand that what, where you're going is a great place, but you got to, let me share something with you. Make sure that your habits are right in this season. Make sure your habits are right. Make sure you got the right habits. Remember this here. You do things because of your habits. Habits create lifestyles. You got to do things. You got to make sure the habits are in place. If you're a writer, you need to get up and write a paragraph or, or something every day. Write a paragraph at least. The more you do it, the more the mind will patternize it. Next thing you know, you're writing two paragraphs. Next thing you know, you're writing a chapter. You're a songwriter. Get up and write a couple songs or a song a day. That's one song a day. Y'all hear me? I said, get up and write one song a day. Hmm. Sometimes you're going to have to understand that what you have to do is you got to get them habits. That paradigm has to shift. You're in a new season. You don't want the old stuff from last season. But if your mind don't change, you're going to get the same thing. A lot of people did New Year's uh, night, watch night services. They come in talking about, oh, yeah, and coming with their resolutions and and whatever they call them, uh, them, them, them things that, you know, they'll be saying how that, oh, I'm going to do this this year, uh, whatever it is. But let me share something with you. You can make all kind of resolutions, whatever. I'm going to lose weight. Not if you have not disciplined yourself to quit putting all that stuff in your mouth that you shouldn't be putting in there. Not unless you discipline yourself to take a walk around the block, drink a bottle of water, hmm. stretch your muscles. Mm -hmm. See, don't 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 fool yourself. That's why every year everybody get up at these watch night services, running around the church and talking about what they gonna do this year and. And making all these these uh, New Year resolutions, whatever you want to call them, I'm gonna tell you something right now. If you look in health clubs, January the club is full of people. One time, uh, in one of my, one of our health clubs, I used to be a part of. You know, uh, I I mean, I'm a gym rat, so I used to stay at the gym all the time, working out and stuff. But I know January the club filled up, and one guy said, "Man, we'll have our gym back after a while." And I didn't really know what he said. He said, we'll have our gym back. Give, give it a month. Give it a month and a half. We'll have our gym back. Just as sure as he said. And, and, and the retailers love it because January, they're selling all kind of workout clothes. You know, because people like to look good when they work out now. You know, ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, we used to just go to the gym and old pair of sweatpants, t-shirt, and hit it. But now everybody wants to look good. Nice tennis shoes to match everything. Not wrong with it. You know, they always say, you never know who you might meet in there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't be going there to meet nobody. I just go in there to get me a good workout. But January, the retailers make a lot of, December, January, they make a lot of money. I'll sell all them workout clothes. And then they make money selling workout equipment. Everybody got these New Year's resolutions. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. But the problem is they subconscious state of mind have not been changed. They made a conscious decision to buy them clothes, get them some machines. Uh, uh, they might walk for a few days. They made a conscious decision that they're going to eat better. But the problem with that is because they have not been practicing it for some months and really gotten their subconscious state on board, they, they get excited, make the conscious decision, and then after a while, you see the gym start thinning out. All them folk with all them workout clothes, all, and then the equipment they bought start collecting dust. They start putting boxes on it. You know why? Because the subconscious wasn't changed. 
You got to work on your mind. You got to make sure that your subconscious have been changed enough for the things that this season is going to bring. You got to make sure the right paradigms. Come on. The right paradigms, the habits is there in place to support the success that you need to achieve. You need habits to achieve success. And sometimes you got to study what successful people do and do what they do. You'll get the same thing they get. But you got to first change that, that subconscious state of mind. That mind got to change. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Now, you got to make sure that you got the habits that it's going to take to achieve what this season is requiring. If this season, if this season is requiring you to be a writer, you got to get that writing discipline. Uh, yeah, I got to use the word discipline. I know. I know a lot of folks don't want to hear that. So discipline is making yourself do what you don't want to do. Yeah, I got to get the writing discipline. In other words, that means that I got to sit down and write even though I don't want to. Even though I done lost my inspiration to do it. Keep doing it long enough, it'll come back. Mm -hmm. And then so, I got to make sure that I have done everything it takes to get my habits right. See, so now, you got to understand this here. Because in this season, you got to have habits in place because you're going to have to be a doer, not just a talker. It might be time to birth the company. You got to make sure that you have been working, buying your supplies, just thinking about watching YouTube, getting your, getting your uh, you know, information together, getting your philosophy together, to the sitting up watching gun smoke. Oh, y'all ain't talking right now. Fear factor. Watching basketball. Them boys already rich. You broke and you trying to get where they at. Watching Netflix. Actors making money. Nothing wrong with you. You could watch it sometime, but don't sit there and binge watch that stuff every evening and you are not working on changing yourself, changing your habits. Come on. So you can start working on your craft, your business. It takes practice to get better. I said it takes practice to get better. It takes practice. I want y'all to understand. I don't want you to miss this season. Because you can miss it. If you don't recognize what's going on this season. And don't be trying to get no prophets and apostles to pray and show that God. You know, no, you need to get in the presence of God so God himself can tell you what it is he's doing in this season. If it's time for you to get married or whatever, you, and, and you, you, I mean, you got to start studying marriage material books and you got to start disciplining yourself to live with somebody else because that's two people coming together. Ain't no two people just alike. And ain't no sense you trying to make them just like you. Uh oh, that's where you're going to have some trouble. You're trying to convert them and change them to you. Imagine if everybody in the world was like you, it'd be a boring world, wouldn't it? So why do you want somebody in the same house just like you? Enjoy each other's differences. Enjoy the differences. Their differences might help you. You might not be a person like to read, but they might like to read. And that might rub off on you. See that? They might not be a person who like to get out and enjoy themselves. But they see you enjoying yourself, getting out and, and going bowling or movies or something. They say, you know what, I think I need to get out and start doing some things. And y'all get out and start in, in, enjoying life together. Y'all see that? Whatever, whatever the time is, you got to prepare for. Whatever the season is, you got to prepare for. You got to make sure that you're prepared for it or you'll miss it. You see me sitting there talking, oh, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting like the story about the man out there on the ocean. I'm waiting on God. I think they sent a, a man came out on the boat. Say, you want me to help you? No, I'm waiting on God. A ship came by. I'm waiting on God. Something else came by. I'm waiting on God. And then it was amazing. All these times, he said, well, why ain't you move? Come and get me. He said, I attempted several times to come get you. Every time you turned me away, saying that you was waiting on me. But that was me out there. <laughs> I came out there to get you. How many of y'all got that came to get you? And you talking, oh, I'm just waiting on God. 
You're scared to, the, the, you're scared to even accept the help. Isn't it amazing that in these times and seasons, a lot of times things happen. And as things happen, sometimes it will be almost like it's too good to be true. Anybody hear me right now? See, now that's another thing I want you to, to watch out for. It's too good to be true mentality. Because you'd have been struggling these that oncoming. You've been struggling up to this point. Now here comes some exciting things that can help you. But you too full of fear. Talking about it's too good to be true. Here come a man treating you nice, full of the Holy Ghost. And because you done been through a bunch of knuckleheads, man to do anything for you. A man, man that, that, I mean, cater to your every need and love you. But now, uh, you because you've been dealing with knuckleheads that, that didn't appreciate you. People that ran all over, trampled on your feelings and all that stuff. And now you saying, this is just too good to be true. I want to see a devil like the rest of them. Mm. It's too good to be true. A business opportunity comes up. You've been struggling. All of a sudden, you make a little money. Say, is this too good to be true? You don't know sometimes that too good to be true mentality will stop you. Because it'll put fear. It'll make you think that something, the devil got to be in this here somewhere. Hmm. Y'all follow me? So, we got to understand this here. Understand that you deserve this. I done been through hell. I done suffered. Deserve. You deserve it. Come on here, somebody. I can listen. And, and now, this is the, the kicker, too. People are going to think that you don't deserve it. She don't deserve no man like that. I deserve it. She ain't qualified for that. He don't deserve no woman like that. Oh, she don't deserve no job paying that much money. Oh, he don't deserve no business making all that money. How's he making all that money in the first year? Simple. Because I trust God. People will think that you don't deserve. And they will hate on you. They will be jealous. And I'm going to tell you this here. And they will try to tear your name down. But how many know the Bible said no weapon formed against you shall prosper? You should tell them you should have did it last season. It's too late now. You even tell the devil that it's too late now. You got to tell folk it's too late now. Tell the witch down the block. It's too late now. Your witchcraft might have slowed me down last season, but it's too late now. It's too late. Too late. Your lie might have stopped me. It's only going to bring advertising and make folk want to come see me. Are y'all hearing me? You might lie on me at work. It's going to make the supervisors come and look at me. When they see how diligent I am, your lie on me is going to give me a promotion. They say, wow, people were talking about you, talking down. But we came and checked you out for ourselves. And we see that it was a lie. It was all a lie. How many know a lie will be exposed? See that? Understand the lie will be exposed. And now, guess what? Now they're saying, you know what? We see you are a diligent worker. We're going to give you a promotion and a pay raise. And guess what? God promotes you right up over the folks that were lying on you and raise your pay up above them. Oh, they really have something to talk about now. Oh, they really got something to talk about now. They be like mad now. But the Bible says in Joseph's brother, what you meant for evil, God has turned it around for the good. Hallelujah. I submit to you that what the devil meant for evil, God is turning around for you for the good. This is the season of things to turn for you. Things that la shot things to turn for you. Things that was trying to drive you crazy. Things that were trying to pull you down. 
things that, that they're trying to hold you down so you don't go nowhere. But guess what? It is a time now to where that the spirit of the Lord God is promoting you. And promotion don't come from the north or the south, but promotion come from God. He set it one up and take another one down. I'm telling you right now, y'all better get ready because it's the season of promotion. I feel the promotion anointing upon me tonight. I feel you're being promoted. I know they wanted you to be demoted, but God said you're going to be promoted. Mm. Woo, glory. Oh my God, I feel the anointing. I feel the time of change, the season of change, seasonal changes up on each one of you. And then don't mem never mind about what you've been going through, how hard it's been. Now here's another one. Here, here's a big one here. Do not let your mind become tribulational nasty. What that means is you got to get your mind out of the trial before your body come out, before your finances come out. Your mind told you the Beverly Hill Billies. If they got their mind out the hills of Kentucky and started thinking about Beverly Hills, a better place, a rich place. When they hit that all, it wouldn't have been no problem because they would have started dressing different right in the in the in the uh, right there in Kentucky. They would have probably got another car. They would have started doing things with their little they little place different. They might have tried to start trying to eat, eat different food, to eat all them possums and all that stuff, coons and stuff. Come on, what are you gonna do different? What are you going to do different? I want to know. Are you going to bring, see, you got to come out head first. Bring that mind out first. Get that mind out the ghetto before your body come out. Oh, my God. Take care of the car you got before you want a new one. Keep the one-bedroom apartment clean. You can't keep it clean. This is talking about no house. It's just going to be one big mess. Take care of the money you have now. Tie, sow, save, invest. So I said, Master, I ain't got that much money. I don't care. Invest twenty dollars a week. Save twenty dollars and, and then take it over to a brokerage account. Keep setting till you get enough to buy some kind of stock. Buy stock right now for five dollars. Buy four. Of them. Research and buy you some some penny stock. So you can start buying blue chip and growth stock, dividend stocks. Come on. Get ready to be an owner. I said, get ready to be an owner. Get ready. Get an get a ownership mentality. Get ready to be an owner. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me right now. Get ready. Start practicing ownership skills. Start practicing owning a business. Start practicing ownership. Hallelujah. Start practicing being an owner of your own company, your own business. Start making other folk rich. Start owning from the side. You know, when you buy stock, you buy 1% of a company. And we, we use the terminology, I just bought another company. Gives you a sense of ownership. Buy one stock of McDonald's, you own 1%, one, one, 1 you know, of McDonald's. You're still a company owner at, at $232. That's how much the stock costs. You're a company owner right now. See, and, and, and that's why you got to get your esteem up. You got to get your mind up. You got to get your esteem up. You got to walk around and get your confidence up. I'm not talking about get pride. I'm talking about get your confidence up. Y'all see that? Whatever it is you want to be, my, my apologies to tell say dress like a, you want to be a, 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 a security guard company owner, dress like a security guard. Smell like one. Look like one. Hallelujah. Y'all see that? How you doing, pastor? You, 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 you see what I'm saying? Dress like it. Look like it. Are y'all hearing me? You, you, you want to be a, a music producer? Even before I started producing music, I started dressing a certain way and I would wear a certain kind of jewelry and I didn't go broke, broke the buyers or nothing like that. 
I like always have like designer clothes anyway. And they were priest I would go, they said, You're a producer, ain't you? I said, Yep. And I wasn't even fully, you know, I hadn't really learned it to the T. I'm still learning. I'm still kind of learning. But you know what? I looked like a music producer. And so therefore, people will come up and ask me about producing music for them. Hey there, Pastor. Yeah. See? I looked like a producer. I'm showing you this for example. In other words, you got to look like where you're going. You want to be a nice businessman, businesswoman, get you some business clothes, get you some blues, grays. You some nice blazers. Come on here. And I know some of them, they wear jeans and blazers now too, but, but dress for success. Look like where you're going. They'll be coming around, walk around looking like a rag mop. Come on, you this and all that. You got to start inspiring people right where you are. Do you hear me right now? I said you got to be inspiring people from right where you are. I want you to understand something tonight that God's hand is up on y'all and you're going to have to understand this here. You have come into a new season. You've come into a new place. You've come into a new time. You're going to have to walk that walk. Talk that talk. Be about it. I'm about my success now. And I am not going to miss because the Lord said, whatever I do in this season will prosper. Now, let me bring this here in. Whatever I do, I got to make sure that I got some things in this season. I know what I have to do. And then I got to have enough get up and go to get up and do it. He said, this is the conditions of my prosperity. Whatever I do it, it shall prosper. Not whatever I talk. Uh oh, hmm. Whatever I do will prosper. See, that's some of you right now. You, you, you're trying to figure out what to do. Ain't nothing wrong with if you ain't figured out what to do. But don't let the season pass you by. If you don't know what you got to do, you got to pray. You got to fast, seek the face of God. Mm-hmm. Y'all see that? With your ministry. What is it that God wants you? What, what are you sensing God wants to do with your ministry on this next level? What, what is it? Your business, your career. What is it that you sensing that needs to change that God's going to change what he's trying to do different? See, you're trying to do things, but you're doing things. You're doing things the same way. Sometimes your ministry or business can become antiquated. You can become antiquated. Antiquated means there's of no more use. A lot of ministries now have become antiquated because many of them scared of technology. Many of them don't, don't uh, want to use none of the tools that's available. They just want to get in the church, moan and groan, run around the church, kick, get excited and kick over chairs. Come on and get somebody to prophesy to them. Well, friends, things got to change. You're going to have to understand that there is a realignment now. There's a realignment, a purpose. Now, See, people are not coming to churches for, for the reason like they used to come. You just come and just come because somebody. No, people are coming now. Sometimes people are coming just to see how good the church looks. Which means this here is that you got to have present excellence. You can't have the the uh, the programs. You and uh, your wife or husband picture all crooked on there. Come on here. Sometimes, see, excellence costs, but excellence take you farther. It costs to be excellent. It costs to fix your church up, to make it comfortable, have good air and stuff in there. Heat, come on. Make the environment nice where people feel good about being in there. It, it's it's going to take some money if you got a, a store. 
make the atmosphere shopping wise excellent. How nice soft music playing, music that put them in a mood to to to, to spend money. What you why you think they get y'all at Christmas? <laughs> They put all the shopping, all the Christmas music on. Then you say, oh yeah, I'm in the spirit of Christmas. So what that means, <coughs> you're now, <coughs> excuse me, you're in the spirit of spending money now. Now they done got you in the mood. How many of music will put you in a mood? Worship music puts you in a mood to worship. Praise music puts you in the mood to praise. Love music. Put you in the mood to think about your the one you're in love with, the one you love, your wife or your husband. Come on here. That's that's why, that's why a lot of marriages are bad in church. Everybody want to put Mahalia Jackson on in the bedroom. Come on here, y'all. I know. Oh, Pastor, you didn't go there, did you? Yeah, I went there. Come on here. You're too religious to listen to a Luther Vandross song. You're too religious to listen to a love song. One to help you think about the one you're in love with. You want to go to bed listening to gospel? See, oh man, I, 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 I got to come out of there because I, I was getting ready to go some more places, but y'all might get mad at me. Mm-hmm. Y'all might get mad at me. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And, and, and I, you know, and I, I put like this here. You, you want romance, you tell me you want romance, now your eyes on, on, on uh, Jimmy John. Because Jimmy Johnson like a romantic guy, but then you get your husband, or your husband and you want to go to bed dressed like an Eximo. Uh-oh. See, I, I knew that wasn't going to go. You want to go to bed dressed like an Eximo. He got to pull layers of clothes off you. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, Pastor, you shouldn't be talking like that. Oh, I don't talk like that because it's real. Y'all see that? He got to pull layers of clothes. By the time the man get through... Getting all them clothes, man and man, ready to go to sleep. And sometimes men do the same thing. When they, you see, well, I, I'm, I'm trying to show you something here. See, whatever it is that you you want you want success in, you got to walk by the principle that's going to make you successful. Am I talking right? If you got a wife or husband, you got a a, a, a man, you got. Husband got a wife. You got to keep constantly keep going after whatever it took to get her. You got to spend more to get her, to keep her. Mm -hmm. You bring all the flowers, candy, sending flowers to a job and all that stuff. And, and you know, because you were in the, trying to get her. Now that you got her, now she barely see flowers, candy, anything. Don't see no just because card. Mm. In the beginning, you cooked, ladies, you cooked real good, cooked the meals every day. He said, boy, I can look forward to this here. Now the man come home. Is the food ready? Anything cooked? You know, you better get in there and cook and cook me some while you at it. Now I'm showing y'all something here. I ain't picking on nobody. See, whatever you did to prepare your rituals, that's what you got to continue to do and more. Now I'm trying to show you something here. You in business. You got to be diligent in business. You got to stay diligent. Come on. You can't be coming to your place of business or an hour later. Come on. That ain't excellence. That's going to make you miss money. Ask me. I know I did it. Say, Pastor, I came by the store and you went there. Oh, I was there. I said, what time you come? Oh, uh, we came at uh, 10. Well, that's the time the soap was open. They came at the right time. But I, I'm, I'm getting there at 11. I'm missing money. Don't miss out because of your slothful habits. Hmm. Boy, boy, boy. Woo. Now, I want y'all to catch this here. I want you to understand something here. Then I'm going to minister to a few of y'all. The cost of being great, it costs. There's greatness in you, but it's going to cost you something to bring it up out of you. You're going to recognize these seasons in these seasons that you're going through. You got to know what every one of these seasons are about. That's why you ain't got no time. He hard, playing around, gossip games, lying games, all this stuff. Attending other people's business. It's too much to do. You have to mind your own to take six months. 
to mind your own business six months leave other folks alone. Quit attending to other people's business and attend to your own self. How many know what I'm talking about? Attend to you. That might sound selfish, but it ain't. If you get you right, it can help other people looking at you to get right. Get yourself in a success mode. I told God, I know now there's some big things that's got to manifest. Big things have to manifest now. Big things have to manifest. There, 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 is, there is now a time that God is bringing in now. These seasons, the season has kicked in. It's time to change. It, we can't be running around going through another year and getting the same stuff we got last year. It's time for change. Time for your church to change. Time for your ministry to change. Time for your business to change. Time for the way you structure your life to change. It's time to get organized and get structured and get yourself together. Am I talking the right? Get all your setups, all your business that needs to set up. Set them up. We can't keep talking about stuff. I told God I'm, I'm done talking. I'm done talking now. It's action time now. This is a season where you're going to have to take action. Your mind has got to be in a place to where to take action. And you're going to have to get that mind ready. Start practicing, practice, 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 practice. Whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing, you are going to have to practice, practice, practice to get that thing wedged into your subconscious state. And then when you get it in there, guess what? It's on automatic pilot. Oh, somebody give him praise. He's worthy. Amen. I said he's worthy. Now, Father, I thank you for the people of God that's on here. And I pray, God, that you give me a rhema word, a prophetic word, a word, God, that would encourage them, that would, that would bring life. I feel a word that's going to break some things instantly tonight. That when it's spoken, it's going to break some finances instantly. It's going to break things instantly. New ideas, new businesses, different things. Mm. People will not. People will not. And I say people will not be antiquated. The old ideas and stuff. No, they're going to be able to be used. They're going to update their lives. They're going to update themselves. And now I thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord God. Uh-huh. I want to say, Pastor Bush, not daughter Pam, mama, <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Bush. Um, the Lord told me to tell you, he said that he is updating some things around your ministry. And God said this here, he said that all of the follow ground is being broken. Pastor, follow ground is ground that was once uh, broken up, you know, but now it has gotten hard again. And I see some areas around your ministry that was once broken up, but it's gotten hard. But God said this is the season of the fallow ground being broken up because the time of the latter rain is coming. The time of the former and the latter rain is coming upon your ministry. And God said that there's a new birth. There's a new thing. New things are happening even right now. And even the things you dealt with a couple of weeks ago, the Lord said that I'm going to cause things to transform. And I'm going to move in a way that I've never moved before. And I hear God saying this. He said, and your anointing as well. And in your physical body, there's an anointing of healing flowing this night right here, woman of God. And I hear God say this here, every snake that crawls around the ministry going to be exposed because the time of chopping up snakes is here. And I heard God say, that, God told me to tell you, he said, you get ready because every challenge you've been through over the last six months, God said it's worth it all. And he's getting ready to move by the way of a miracle. And I hear God saying today, he said, I'm, I'm releasing a brand new anointing upon you, a brand new, oh, there it is, in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Kim, Kim, Kimwood, are you still on there with me? Sir, are you still on there? Kimwood, Kimwood, Kimwood. Answer me quick, Kimwood, if you're on there. Answer me quick, Kim. I saw you. I saw you. Come up, Kimwood. 
Ah, la mo shata kasa ba mama. The anointing is moving. And if you don't hear, say amen. I need to see something. If you don't hear, I need to see. Glow mama shaba ba ba. Saboko la bo Okay, you let me know if you still on here. I got to move on to ministering to somebody else here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Shereel, the Lord said, get ready because the time of change is here. The Lord told me to tell you, he said, don't keep running or walking around the same mountain. Don't keep walking around the same place, Shereel. The Lord said there were some folk you got to drop. There were some people that you got to get away from. They're, everybody don't believe like you believe it. I hear God saying this here. He said, and you got to watch who you're talking to in this city. God, see where some folk prayed against you. But the, uh, tonight, God told me to say he's reversing everything, Sharil. And I hear the Lord say, get ready because there's a breakthrough anointing even right. Ah, You will not walk around the same mountain. You will not walk around the same place. Mm. But the Lord say, you're coming out. I'm giving you a new direction, said the Lord. Mm. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Mm. Pastor uh, Margaret, the Lord told me to tell you, he said, tonight is the night of a new anointing. And God is recharging you up with fire. He's recharging you with fire, Pastor Margaret. The Lord told me to tell you, this. he said, get ready because doors are opening up for you. And I hear God say, you're going to see the next level unfold right before your very eyes. Next level of provision, next level of housing, next level of ministry, next level of seeing your kids come to Christ. And God said, I'm going to do everything my way. I'm going to do it the way I would do it, said the Lord. And I hear God say, get ready because every battle you've been in, he said, I'm telling you something. He said, I guarantee you victory now. You're walking in victory now. And nothing shall be, and all paperwork shall be worked out. And God told me to tell you, Pastor Mark, things are working in your favor, said the Lord. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Yes, Lord God. Pastor Pamela Bush. God told me to tell you, he said he's renewing some things. And I seen, I don't know, I see some business papers. I see some stuff being renewed, but it's going to be renewed in a different way. Because God said, behold, daughter, I do a new thing and it shall spring forth now. And I hear the Lord saying, daughter, that nothing shall be impossible. There's a miracle which your name wrote on it, and it is a substantial amount of money. It's a check. And I see, I don't know where this money is coming from. But the Lord said it has been released, Pastor Pamela. And I hear God said, you get ready because nothing shall be impossible. And I hear the Lord said, every door that has been closed has been opened up. The Lord told me to tell you, get ready because you're going to walk the doors. Windows of opportunity. This is the season. This is the time now. I buy my mark shot. Mm. And the Lord said, yeah, you'll be able to put your seed in the ground real soon. Yes. Mm-hmm. The one that you wanted to sow, you're going to be put in the ground real soon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I hear God say, see, I got your back 100%. You're going to see in this upcoming, th these upcoming months, increase, 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 said the Lord. Mm. Mm. Yvette, mm. Minister Yvette, the Lord told me to tell you. Mm, that your ministry is exploding now. And the more you preach and the more you do, the more God's going to move. That stuff in the Bahamas is a piece of cake to God. That stuff you deal with in the financial realm, even dealing with banks, companies, is a piece of cake to God. God said, I want the ministry to come up out of you that I put in you years ago. The time now of deliverance is here. You have a strong deliverance ministry. And the Lord said, as you bring that ministry up, you're going to find everything is going to work on your behalf. And I heard the Lord said, and daughter, nothing shall be impossible. I tell a There's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. And yes, and there is some details with some paperwork being worked out. Mm -hmm. And I hear God said, you just keep praising them and sowing like you've been doing. You're going to see the hand of God manifest like never before. Oh, glory to God. Thank you. I want everyone tonight, everyone tonight, you know what I'm going to ask everybody to do tonight? Everybody who can? I'm going to ask everybody to sow a $25 seed tonight. 
everybody who can, that can sow a $25 seed. The Spirit of God put that in my spirit. He said, ask the people, everyone that can sow a $25 seed offering. We don't charge people because you can't pay for this. But you can honor God. Help us out in the ministry. I'm still traveling, still out on the road. Everyone that can sow a $25 seed offering, I'm going to ask you to sow it if you can. If you can't sow $25, whatever you can sow, if it's 21 I don't know. But I want everyone who can sow a $25 seed offering to sow one. Glory to God, if you can. Yes, Lord God. Oh, my Lord, we thank you. Globama, Shatando, Dolobogosama. Yes, Nita, the Lord told me to tell you that everything that God moved in is going to be awesome. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm fixing an urgent issue right now. You'll see. There's a quick turnaround. There's a quick miracle. There's a quick door that's opening. And I hear God saying nothing shall be impossible. But I hear God said, I'm going to resolve some things that need to be resolved. I'm going to work those things out that need to be worked out. And the Lord said, daughter, you shall see that my hand shall move and nothing shall be impossible. Yes. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Ooh, shatalabamasa. Everyone that can sow a seed, I'm asking you to do it tonight. If you can do it tonight, I see some of y'all pledging. But if you can sow one tonight, I ask you to sow one. There's things we're trying to do. And yes, there is a need. And uh, there's some things we have to do here with the ministry. Um, I've been paying for mics and different things because we're sitting up the uh, media center. When I get back home, we're working on the media center. We're setting up the media center. And we have to buy these studio mics. Each one of them costs like $300 apiece. And I need one in the studio just in case when I got guests. Different guests coming on, we'll be talking about different topics and stuff. And then there's a music studio. But I'm asking everyone that can help me out with a seed tonight. Help the apostle out. I'm going to ask you tonight, if you can, sow a seed tonight. Thank you, Lord God. $25 is not a lot of money. And it ain't going to bankrupt you if you got it. Amen. I understand if you don't have it. Oh, glosha tandala basa. Or tonight, if you can sow whatever you can sow, I want you to do so. And I want you to sow for your um, relatives, sow for your kids, sow for, just put their name on the seed. Sow for your family. Sow for your ministries. Sow for your purpose. So I'm going to ask you all to do that tonight. Oh, God, we bless your name right now. I said, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, by my mind, shine. The Father, I release the anointing of the healing up on each one. And I want to ask everyone to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Eddie Tate. You'll see my son up there because his name same name, man, but he's a music guy. And plus, he looks a little younger than me. So you know that ain't me. Um. What happens, and then go to, and you could hit one of my videos. You'll see one of the videos. Then you can hit the E, the, the, the channel. Go to the channel. You'll see all the videos will come up. And I, and I want y'all to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button so you get notifications of the videos. And plus, on top of you'll be helping me. The more subscribers I can get, the better it, it can be. We're trying to get over a thousand subscribers now. Mm-hmm. Woman of God, I don't, do you use Cash App? Pastor Bush? Do you use Cash App? If you do, my Cash App is dollar sign 21 Apostle. Dollar sign 21 Apostle. If you use Cash App. 
or if you use Zelle, I'll tell you the number to, uh, or you, 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 you use PayPal, okay, well, that's Eddie Tate. 27 at yahoo i mean i'm sorry at gmail.com that's my paypal mm -hmm. that's that's yes eddie tate 27 at gmail.com for my paypal and that's just eddie tate for paypal and once again eddie tate 27 at gmail.com and that's my paypal address there mm -hmm. all right woman of god i appreciate you thank you father mm -hmm. oh it is awesome y'all the presence of the lord god is is awesome in this place i feel the power of god and I am telling each one of y'all right now, I sense the Holy Ghost. I sense a breakthrough anointing. Uh-huh. Hey, Kima, Kima, how you doing? Bless you. I'm praying for your promotion. I'm praying for your promotion, Kima. I don't know, I just heard God say that I'm praying for your promotion. And you know as well, I'm praying for the family. It's constantly. But I see where God is moving and strengthening you guys. Because God said there's a legacy each one of y'all got to pick up from your mom. There's things that's in your mind that you're going to have to do. There's some things that you have to do. Some things she would want you to do. As far as even purpose. As far as helping people. And, and Kima, for some reason I see a non-profit organization that you're starting for something. Like God's going to work everything out. and going to work all the details out. And it's going to help a whole lot of people. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you. Mm. Oh, tonight, y'all, I feel the Holy Ghost. There is a supernatural anointing. A supernatural anointing. Nothing shall be impossible. Mm-hmm. And the hand of the Lord shall move in a mighty way upon each one of you. I sense that. And each one of you, be a blessing. Amen. Whatever you can be. If you can sort of $25, that's fine. For some of you, you can send cash out. Do what you can do tonight. Just do what you can do tonight. And I, and I want to praise God for each one of y'all tonight. Remember, go to YouTube. You can watch this again on YouTube. You can watch on Facebook Live, but go to YouTube. Get, get some views on there if you want to go back and watch this here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Remember, y'all, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Amen. You'll see all these videos coming up of me teaching like this here. I haven't put none of the revivals on there yet. But I want you all to go and subscribe. All right, and I appreciate your support. Hit that subscribe button when you go on there. And so we just want to thank God tonight for each one. Thank God for the word of the Lord tonight. I hope you enjoyed the word of the Lord. I hope you enjoyed it tonight. Amen. So I'm going to at this time get off and I'll see y'all again tomorrow. I might do another day session tomorrow morning. And then I'm, I do one tomorrow night. We're going to get this word out. And we're going to inspire people. All right? Okay. God bless you guys. I love y'all. Keep your head up. In Jesus' name.